picking the right lens to shoot your videos on might feel a little bit daunting. There are so many different options out there. And this is something I've been experimenting with for the past couple of months or so. And what I wanna do in this video is show you how different lenses can affect the way your video feels. All the focal lengths that I talk about in this video are as if they're being used on a full frame camera, unless otherwise stated. If you're using an APS-C camera, then you need to divide the number that I talk about by 1.6 to get the equivalent focal length. If you're using a micro four thirds camera, then you need to divide it by two. Hope that makes sense. At the moment, I'm shooting at 20 millimeters on a full frame camera, which makes this quite a wide setup. But is this right for you? The problem with a 20 millimeter lens is it's really wide. So it gets a lot of extra stuff in your frame. Which might not be what you want. And it's not always been what I want. I've been through a stage of using a 50 millimeter lens, a 30 millimeter lens, a 16 millimeter lens, an 85 millimeter lens. And they all kind of make you feel slightly differently about what you're watching. I use a wide angle lens because I want you to feel close to me. I wanna invite you into my space. You see streamers using wide angle lenses quite a lot and that's because they wanna show off their setups but they still want to be the center of attention. And the nice thing about a wide angle lens is I can get really close to you and still be in focus. But wide angle lenses aren't for everybody. So what I wanna do in this video is leave the camera in exactly the same place and switch to a 50 millimeter lens. Now, now you're looking at a video of me that I shot about five minutes ago, shot on a 50 millimeter lens. And that's why there's another light behind me because I had to light myself using a different light source to my main one. In this video, I'm about six feet away from the camera. Camera's in the same place, I'm six feet away. If we cut back to this angle, I'm about a foot away from the camera. I'm really close to it and you can see everything in my setup. Cut back to that angle and your view is much more refined. Now this is good for a couple of reasons. If you're in a big space, you get that nice compression so the background is more blurred out and you look more, I'm gonna use the word professional. This setup feels more casual, but let's take this one step further. We're gonna to swap to an 85 millimeter lens now. So you can see, I'm even further away. I'm about eight or nine feet away from the camera now. And you do have to have a pretty significantly sized space to be able to take advantage of this. You can see that that compression is even more enhanced now and it hides even more of the space. So if you're in a really messy environment, then an 85 millimeter might be just what you're looking for. So we've done 20 millimeters, we've done 50 millimeters, we've done 85 millimeters. And now this is the equivalent of a 30 millimeter lens. I think this looks pretty nice. I don't often use this lens on this camera, but honestly, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm usually a big fan of a 30 millimeter lens. So let's just run through those options for you. 20, 30, 50, 85. 20, 30, 50, 85. And the longer your focal range, the further away you're gonna have to be. One of the main benefits that I like shooting on a 20 millimeter is the fact that I can crop in. And now I've turned my 20 millimeter into a 30 millimeter. So I can have the best of both worlds. When I said 20 millimeters is more inviting, I think the same is true on the opposite end. The further away from the camera you are, the less inviting it is, the more sterile, and again, the more professional it is. Let's take a look at some clips from my past videos where I've used different lenses. Tip number one, and it's probably the simplest tip in this list, but it's also the easiest thing to overlook. Make sure your camera settings are correct. And by this, I mean the white balance. Make sure the white balance on your camera matches your key light. Camera manufacturers are coming out with new cameras what feels like pretty much every day, and it's really hard to keep track of them all. There's the A6300, the A6400, the A6500, the A6600, and that's not including the full frame offerings. Filming your first wedding video can be really daunting. Where do you start? What equipment do you need? Where do you need to be at what time? If you're about to shoot your first wedding video and you're looking for some help to get you through, then you've come to the right place. clicked 
on this video, then like me, you probably struggle getting your sound right in your videos. You're probably thinking to yourself, yes, sound is something I need to invest in, but there's always been something else more important, like a new lens or a new camera or a new computer. Depending on what you're doing, you might wanna mix it up a little bit and use different focal lengths on different cameras. If you're shooting an overhead shot, then a 50 millimeter is beautiful, but you do have to get that quite high, but it does compress that image and just make that look much more professional. I did a music video shoot a couple of months ago and for the main shoot, I used a 16 millimeter 1.4, but when I was focusing on the vocals, I wanted to get that as compressed as I possibly could. So I used an 85 millimeter on a cropped body, which turns it into, 85 times 1.6. Alexa, what's 85 times 1.6? 85 times 1.6 is 136. Ah, oh, 136. I was gonna guess 134. I wasn't too far off. And that just made the vocalist absolutely pop out of the frame. I'm not trying to tell you that I think this is the best lens for making YouTube videos. I'm not. I'm trying to demonstrate to you what each lens looks like and ultimately how that changes the feel of your videos. I hope this video has helped you decide what lens you want to get for your setup. If it did, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to watch another one of my videos, why not try this one where I tested out what I think might be the best shotgun microphone for your camera. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again really soon.